art in heaven, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, the eternal God and our Savior, God, we give thanks and praise unto you for who thou art. You are our God, the great shepherd in heaven. We are the sheep of your pastor and the workmanship of your hand. Heavenly Father, we bow down at your feet at this time, knowing that heaven is thy throne and earth is thy footstool. We surrender all to thee and humble ourselves at your feet. In the name of Jesus, as we draw nigh unto you, O oh Lord, you said if we draw nigh unto you, you will draw nigh unto us. So as we submit ourselves to you, Almighty God, and you will lift us up. We pray, our oh God, and ask your blessing upon this teaching tonight. Uh, we pray for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We take full control tonight and lead us into our truth. Grant us revelation of the word of God tonight and interpretation and understanding. Strengthen our faith, O oh God Almighty, and our desire to serve you, our determination to continue in the name of Jesus, to press through, O oh God Almighty's pressing time. God, and ask thee, God Almighty, to be with us. You know, you never leave us, not forsake us, but God will help us that our confidence will grow and our desire, O oh God, to seek after you will continue. Help us not to slack our riding. But in the name of Jesus Christ, help us, God, to be who you want us to be. Lord, it is you that has saved us, it is you that has called us, it is you that has justified us and sanctified us. God, and we thank you tonight. We, your children, humble at your feet, your mighty God. Bless us, we pray thee. Remember your children everywhere, locally and nationally and internationally. Everyone, oh God Almighty, in this, at this time, Lord, seeking after you. Make them a blessing. Be with them, Lord, and stay with us tonight. We give thanks unto you right now. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you and welcome again to the Bethel United Church. Jesus Christ Apostolic, two gifts of road, Friday night Bible class. We are here with the word of God. Amen. And we come because we love him. And we want to keep his commandment. We want to know more about him. Amen. David says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Tonight, we have come, amen, to look into the word of God. And we are in 2 Chronicles 20. Amen. We are in a, a time, a season of fasting. And amen. We did last week, we dealt with Isaiah 58 do it a fasting and we went through that and was a blessing and tonight we are going to see the power of fasting amen in uh, second chronicles 20 so if you turn your bibles over to second chronicles uh, chapter 20 amen i'm just going to read a few verses there and then we can look amen and we can see what this chapter is saying to us amen and what the lord wants us to understand at this time and the season that we are in. Amen. So if you turn your Bibles over to Second Chronicles chapter 20, it's a well-known chapter, I believe. Amen. But we're just going to uh, point out a few verses and then we can start to exegete the text. Amen. To see what the Lord is saying unto us in Jesus' name. Amen. So, I'll be read a few verses in your ears while you follow me with your Bible in Jesus' name. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verses, uh, we, we're going to read verses 1 to, to 4, and then we read verse 19 and verse 20. All right, and then we look at the text to see what the Lord is saying to us. So we we'll begin the chapter. He said, it, it came to pass. After this also, that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them others beside the Ammonites came against to Asiphat to battle. Then there came some that told to Asiphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria. And behold, they be in a Zantamar, which is Engedi. And Joasiphat feared 
and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim the fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to see the Lord. Verse 19. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Horites stood up to praise the Lord, God of Israel, with a loud voice on high. Let me also read verse 18. Amen. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. So as we see here in verse 18, worshiping was taking place. Verse 19, praising was taking place. So we have to worship and praise to get the victory. Well, let us look at the chapter itself. Amen. In Second Chronicles. And we know that the Chronicles, amen, were written, amen, by some say Samuel and some say it's Jeremiah. But one thing we know, I'm not sure, we know we have got the Second Chronicles written, and we know that is the Word of God. And that's where we are to, um, this evening. It might be days where some of you are, because I noticed that we are from everywhere, amen, and the Zoom at, uh, this evening, overseas, of Jamaica, all over. So it's, it's evening here, but it's day in some, some parts of the world. Amen. But so glad to have you on the Zoom teaching tonight in the name of Jesus. So it said, it came to pass, chapter 20, verse 1, after this also, that the children of Noah and the children of Ammon and with them others beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Now, we see immediately here that oh, three groups, a uh, different section of people that came out to fight against Asaphat, the king of Judah. Asaphat was one of these kings that turned up Asa, but his father did not do right. But Asaphat did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, and he removed the groves, and the Lord blessed him. And here we have a whole multitude came out against him, amen, to battle. And the Bible said, Then there came some that told to Asifa, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond sea, on this side Syria. And behold, they be in a Zantabar, which is En Gedi. And Joe Asifa feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast to all Judah. Now you see this king, a righteous king. He was a very good king, although he was rebuked one or two times, but then he, he was a king that feared God and the Lord prospered him. Now you have uh, this, these came out against him, but you know, when you read in the scriptures, you know, everybody's also related. You know, the Moabites and and the, the Ammonites and even the, the Ammonites and uh, came out against Joseph and also those from Mount Seir. Now, we have to understand that when you speak about the Moabites, immediately we remember Lot. Uh, these were Lot's two children, Moab and Ammon. So when they came out from, from Egypt, Moses wanted to come to get across, to get into Israel. But Moab and, and, um, Moab and, and Ammon, they objected to Moses uh, getting through. But Moses was about to take up harm against them. And the Lord told Moses, do not, amen, fight them because they are your brethren. Now, they were coming to Jordan and the, from the south, and they had to cross to Moab and Mount Seir, Seir, which is Esau. So Esau descendant was in that section, also Moab. So the, what Moses had to do is to uh, withdraw his attack that he was about to do on them. And the Lord told Moses not to fight them. Um, and Moses had to go the long way around to get up, amen, to cross over 
Jordan, amen, river to get into Jericho. So here we have Moab, and remember that Abraham never lot when he left out of Sodom, then, amen, he asked the angel to let him go uh, to a place. And then he went into the mountains and then he lived up there for a while. And then he had these two sons, amen, to term incest, amen. And one of them name was Moab and one was Ahmad. But to understand where we're going uh, much clearer is that uh, Moab, and, and we all know the story about Ruth, amen. Ruth came from Moab. So, you know, God is a, is a very merciful and great God. He worked out his purpose um, more than we can understand what he's doing. But we know that Ruth came from Moab, amen, and then the Ammonites came from Ammon. Now, and right now, Ammon is the capital of Jordan, amen. So uh, to know where we are, are these two uh, lots, two children, Amen. They he had them in the mountain when after Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed. So we have Joasaphat. Now they came out now uh, with a multitude to attack Joasaphat. But remember, the Lord had told Moses not to fight them. And Moses wanted to pay them. Moses said, We'll pay you. We just want to cross through your land to get to where we want to get to. But they refused Moses. And Moses was about to take up arms, God said, no, don't fight. Better, better, go, better to go the long way around. And Moses did so to get the children of Israel and then um, to Jordan. And then we find that they crossed the, the river Jordan to get over to the other side. So now we have, they came out now to fight Joasipat. The same people that God did told Moses uh, not to fight them. They came out now against Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah. Now, when Joseph had heard about the multitude that was coming out against him, the Bible said he came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them others beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. They came to fight him. Because he was prospering, God had blessed him, and um, he was doing things to please God. And whenever time you start to please God, you know that the enemy is going to come at you. But Joseph now put his trust in God. Let us see the development of this chapter. Verse two said, then there came some that told Joseph, saying, there cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria. And behold, they be in Ezantamar, which is En Gedi. Now when Jehoshaphat heard this, the Bible said, and Jehoshaphat feared. Now this was a king, a very powerful king, who fought battles before. I just want to let you know that Jehoshaphat had an army of nearly one million. He had an army of nearly one million. If you look in chapter, uh, it's 18, you find 17, 18, you should find that uh, it's written that Jehoshaphat had an army of a million. Now, the Bible said, Jehoshaphat feared. Now, if you had a army of a million and, and they come out against you, obviously what he would do, he would get his army ready for fighting. See the wisdom of Jehoshaphat. The Bible said Jehoshaphat feared, and what he did was he set himself to seek the Lord. Amen. So the, the wisdom of this king, Joshaphat, was that uh, he feared, but he did not take up arms against them. Amen. He did not rely on his one million soldiers. Because you see, when it comes down to God, with God, one, one is a, the majority. God, you don't need no more than God. Amen. No matter how large your army is, no matter what country you are, no matter how your defense is high. Amen. When you have God, you have the majority. So here we have Joseph who knew this and understand something about this God is that the one million soldiers that he had, he didn't get them ready for fighting. He went to God. 
Amen. The Bible says he feared. Amen. He was feared because when he heard about the multitude that came out against him, he feared and set himself to seek the Lord. And what he did, this is the power now, and he proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So what he did, he caused by the weapon which he knows. Fasting is a weapon. Amen. And here we have Jehoshaphat. Amen. What he did was he seek the Lord. Amen. Beloved ones, whenever there is trouble, amen, we have to seek the Lord. If God is on your side, you already won. Amen. So don't rely on ourselves. No matter what we do, always seek the Lord for help. So here we have Jehoshaphat. Did not rely on what he knew, what he had, because he knew that once God was with him, then he already won the battle. But Jehoshaphat set, set himself to seek the Lord. He feared. And what he did, he proclaimed a fast. So we're going to look at the power of fasting tonight. Because when you do fast, you have power. Fasting gives you power. So you notice even Jesus himself, we thought, we thought, we thought that uh, a couple of weeks ago, that after he was baptized, uh, Jesus was baptized. Amen. The Bible said he was full of the Holy Ghost. In, that's Luke chapter 4. And what happened to, to Jesus? He was led of the Spirit into the wilderness uh, to be tempted of the devil. And the Bible said, and after 40 days of fasting, in the 14th verse, he came out of the wilderness in the power of the Spirit. So this is Jesus. Amen. You see the principle here, what the example we need to follow? After baptism, Holy Ghost, fasting to get power. So Jesus came out of the wilderness in the power of the Spirit. That's before he began his ministry. So we need to have power. So beloved ones, even when we are, when we are baptized, amen, got the Holy Ghost. We don't have to sit and say, well, we are okay. We need to have power for ministry. Amen. And Jesus then, when he began his ministry, when he read, amen, from the book of Isaiah in the, in the, in the church in Nazareth, that the spirit of the Lord was upon me because he was now anointed to preach the gospel to the poor. Here we are, Joseph, knowing that no matter how many uh, soldiers he had, what he needed was God. With God on his side, Amen. He already won the battle. God on your side, you can shout. Amen. Because God never fails. Amen. So our dependency is upon him. Wisdom of Joseph at here feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim the fast throughout all Judah because he was the king of Judah. And this was a national fast. National fast because this was a national crisis. Because when you have your country being attacked by anything, by the enemy or anyone, you have a national crisis on your hand. And if you do have a national crisis, you will need to seek the Lord. Amen. Because we can't handle that. Only God can help us. So in a national crisis, in a situation like this, we must seek the Lord. Amen. Many things are going on and we sometimes try to rely on ourselves. Amen. To do it. But I'm telling you, amen. The only time that we are going to be victorious is when we have get God involved in what we are doing. And the Lord is always waiting to see, amen, what we are going to do. He wants us to consult Him, like to us if I did. The Lord knew they were coming. He knew that these, these uh, tribes were coming at that. Jehoshaphat, but he didn't do anything. He allowed Jehoshaphat to consult him, consult him God, before he moved. God wants us to consult him. God wants us to approach him. God wants us to pray to him. And God wants us to put our trust in him. Amen. Then he will fight for us. Jehoshaphat did not just fold his hand, amen, and surrender. He said he feared and set himself to seek the Lord. Amen. And proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. So the entire southern kingdom. Amen. Because Judah was the southern kingdom. The southern kingdom was Judah and Benjamin. Amen. Because the kingdom was divided. And you had the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. So the whole southern kingdom. 
Amen. With Judah. Amen. And you know that Judah means praise. You're going to see that in a minute. What praise can do and fasting can do. Amen. So let us see. Let's take a little bit further. Now you have the king first. You notice, I want to watch the, watch the, the order of things here. So Joseph had feared and said himself, you know, the king first steps out. You know, the king didn't say, well, you people go on fasting. You know, I mean, the king, the, the initiative, he went on fasting. He set himself to seek the Lord. Amen. And he, he proclaimed the fast. That's the leader. Amen. So the order is right here. The leader first decided to seek the Lord. And then he proclaimed a fast to do that, to do that. Now, and then Judah gathered themselves together. So once the order was given by the king, once the king did it, and the order was given by the king, so Judah, amen, gathered themselves together, this tribe, you know, Judah means praise, and Judah is the messianic tribe, amen. They gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. So the order is the king first, see God, then Judah, and look what happened next. And after Judah set himself to see help, help of the Lord, and even out of all the cities of Judah, so the entire city now came together. So the tribe came after the king sets the order, then the tribe, amen, followed the king, and then the rest of the people followed. So everything was in order now, amen. Everyone gathered together. So you must read verse 5. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. So they all came together, amen, with Solomon Temple, the temple, that's where they was, and the new court, and said, O Lord of our fathers, and until so he, he started to pray, now they gathered everybody together in one place, and they were united now in prayer. So you notice the king first, then Judah, then the rest of the city came together, and now it's prayer time. So this was a united prayer because it was a national crisis uh, taking place. Amen. That was happening to them because the enemy came at them. Amen. And it took many, many days for them to gather together. And while they were doing that, gathering weapons to fight against uh, Jehoshaphat and, and, and the people, now Jehoshaphat was seeking God while they was making weapons to come at Jehoshaphat. So here we have Jehoshaphat um, and stood in the congregation of Judah, in the middle of the congregation and of Jerusalem, in the house of the Lord before the new court. That's where they were standing, all gathered together. And he said, now he's, he's going to pray. So here what the prayer is. Here is prayer from verse 6. And he said, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? So you notice he, he, he opens up with the question. Look what he said to God. O oh Lord God of heaven, our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? Question mark. And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thine hand is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee? So he, he put to God that he knew who God was. And what God is able to do. So, you know, he was just admonishing God and saying, we know that this is who you are. Amen. And he said, uh, no, uh, not thou God who did drive out the inhabitants of this land before the people, Israel, and gave it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever. Now this land that he's speaking about. That, that the Lord drove the Eden out and gave it to Abraham. That land was belonging to Noah's grandson. That land was belonging to Canaan. But you know that Canaan was cursed. Amen. After what he did. So the Lord then took the land away because Noah had three sons. Son, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And Ham, and son, was Canaan. But his portion of land was called by his name Canaan. So when the Lord told Abraham that he should, uh, he would leave his country and his, his kindred and his father's house 
and he'll go to a land that he will show him. That was the land of Canaan. So Abraham did not go same time because his father Terah took him up river and took him to a place called Paden era. But after Terah died, and he was up here for 15 years after Terah died, then Abraham, amen, left. The Lord reaffirmed his call and Abraham left Paden era and crossed the river and got into Canaan. And when the Bible said, when he got into Canaan, the Canaanites was in the land. But they were wicked people. They were very, very wicked and cruel people, and the Lord wanted to get rid of them. So that was the land that the Lord took from them and gave it to Abraham. Even today, the Bible speaks of it about the land of Canaan. Amen. The land of Canaan was also changed to the land of Israel. But the Canaanites lived in the land. So but it, it was called the land of Canaan. So this is what Amen. Joachim was saying, he said, Art not thou our God, who did drive out the inhabitants in the land before thy people Israel, and gave it to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever? So what he was doing, reminding God, even of what he did and how they got the land, and how the land belongs to them. Amen. Because it was given to Abraham, their father. No, and he said in verse 8, and they dwelt therein and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name. That was the temple. They built in the land because that piece of land, amen, right now is the same land in Jerusalem. Now, to, a lot of people don't understand that, but that's where Solomon had built his temple. All right, let us read. And they dwelt, verse 8, and they dwelt therein and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name's sake. Now, this is what Solomon had said when they built the temple. He said, if when evil cometh upon us as the sword, judgment or pestilence or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. So here he's reminding God, amen, of the promises that was made when the temple was built. Amen. So what Joseph did, went to God and, amen, begin to remind God that the promises were in the covenant. Amen. That what he would do, amen, if they were attacked or precedents come upon them, then God would hear them and deliver them. And he said in verse 10, and now behold, the children of Ammon, Moab, and Seir. Now you notice that I spoke about Ammon and Moab, those were Lot's two children. But now you see Seir. Seir is Esau. Esau descendants were living in Mount Seir. So you notice now it was Esau that joined up with, with Moab. Mount Seir joined up with Moab and Ammon. Amen. And Mount Seir, whom thou would not let Israel invade. So you notice that when they came from Egypt, Israel wanted to pass through the land, and they would Seir would not allow them to pass through the land. Amen. Although Moses wanted to pay them, but they refused Moses. Moses was about to take up arms, amen, to fight them, but God said, No, don't fight them because they are your brethren. How did they become their brethren? Well, because Seir is Esau descendants. Israel is Jacob descendants. So they were really re related. They were, they were brethren. So the Lord said, oh, don't fight them because they are your brethren. So you have Mount Seir. Esau was married, remember, um, to Ishmael's daughter. They meant Ishmael, uh, daughter. That's what, because remember that Esau and, and Jacob, his brother, also, you find that Isaac and Ishmael, his brother, but one is from the natural seed and one from the spiritual seed. So you notice that Esau married to Ishmael's daughter. Daughters, and which I mean, uh, Isaac and, and, and Rebecca was not happy about that. And so Jacob had got his wife from Aden Aaron. So here we have, he says and, and in verse 10, and now behold the children of Ammon and Moab, and Mount Seir, whom thou would not let Israel invade. 
God would not allow Israel to invade them. When they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. So they were reprieved and they were not allowed to fight them. Uh, because they were looking for a passageway to get across, to get into the promised land, and they couldn't. Because where Mount Seir is a place called Petra. The scripture speaks about it in Bosra. You read about Bosra? I think Isaiah was the one who prophesied about and Bosra saw Jesus coming from Bosra. When Isaiah said, who is this that coming from Edom? The right garment from a place called Petra. So when Jesus returned, uh, we took back to this earth, we find that the, the Jewish people will be hiding around there. And Jesus will go down there. And that's why uh, Isaiah in his prophecy saw him coming from Edom. I said, who is this that coming from Edom with right garments from Bosra? And he said, it is I traveling in the greatness of my strength. She said, I looked around and there was none to help. I wondered and there was none to oppose. So now here we have uh, Joseph reminding the Lord that the Lord did not allow Moses to destroy them. And now they, what they did was they come to invade the Asifat. So Joseph now reminding the Lord and because of his goodness towards them, now they turn around and come to fight against Joseph. Amen. And, and the Messianic tribe in the southern kingdom. So he said in verse 11, Behold, I say, how oh, they reward us. He said, Look how they're rewarding us. Eh? To come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given to us to inherit. Now, here is the complaint. They were saying, You stopped us from invading them, and now they, they, now they are here want to get rid of us out of our possession in which thou hast given to us to inherit. So they had a complaint and God listened to what their complaint was. All right? So now he continues with his prayer and the prayer after he complains his prayer in verse 12. He said, Oh, our God, will thou not judge them? So here we are. He's looking for something to happen. He didn't say he was going to fight them. He asked God to judge them because it's, it's, he had a case here. He put his case to God and listen. And now he said, oh God, our God, will thou not judge them? Verse 12, for we have no might against this great company. You know, he had a million soldiers, but he said, I have no might against them because he was not prepared to fight them with his soldiers because he knew with God he already would win the battle. Because God never fails. Amen. And he knew that. So in verse 12, he said, Oh, our God, begins to pray now. Will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Beloved ones, when things get rough, they'll keep the eye upon Jesus. Jesus is the answer. No matter ever, whatever we're going through, no matter, no matter what is being shown at us, no matter how the enemy comes at us, Jesus is the answer. Our reliance is upon Jesus. Jesus, amen, is the only one that we know never fails. Amen. And Jesus is waiting at us, just like how to as if I pray and ask God's help. Never rely on his own efforts, not his own resources. But he put all his trust and confidence in God. And here we have, he justified praying about this great multitude that's coming to destroy them. Amen. So he said, oh, my God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company. When you have your back against the wall, nowhere to turn to. What you have to do, you have to turn to Jesus. Amen. Because Jesus is the helper. He's the only help we have. He never failed. He never lost a man. Amen. So we have a, a, an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Ascend to the rock. Amen. That's Jesus is the rock. So he said, Oh, our God, will thou not judge them? And we have no might against this great covenant that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do. 
but our eyes are open. If we don't know what to do, we have to turn to Jesus. Even when we know what to do, go to him first. Let God be first. Let's try Jesus first. Don't wait until you try everything and everything fail. Can we sing a song like that sometime? Uh, um, uh, we try Jesus. When everything fails, try Jesus. No, we try Jesus first. If we try Jesus first, you won't have nothing that fail. And nothing won't fail you because Jesus has the answer. And yet we have now we see that Duasifat. Amen. A very wise man. Amen. Decide that is one million soldiers can't help him. He's got no assurance, he's no confidence in them. His confidence is in God. So the Bible went on to tell us that in the 13th verse, and all Judah, all Judah, stood before the Lord. When they heard what the leader said, when they heard, you know, that's always good to have a, a strong, good leader who depend on God. Now, verse 30 says, and all Judah stood before the Lord, look now with their little ones their wives, and their children. Everybody was there. Amen. In the fasting and prayer, you know, fasting is just a powerful thing. You know, because when, amen, Jonah was sent to one Nineveh, you know, and to get rid of uh, with, and the message for Nineveh that God sent him, although he went a different way, but he had to come back and deliver the message. But the message to Nineveh, wicked people, Amen. They were very wicked. Didn't like Israel either. Didn't like Jonah. And Jonah didn't like them. You know, imagine that the Lord sent you to preach to a people that you didn't like. And the people didn't like it. The God said, go preach to them. Go preach a message. And his message was just eight words. Get 40 days and Nineveh shall be over too. But the king, amen, of Nineveh said when he heard it, he said, neither the king, nor no man, nor beast, nor animals, nothing should eat. Everybody went and fasted. Amen. And many they fasted. And they fasted. Everyone, nothing, no animals, nothing could eat. This is what the power of fasting did. And when God saw the way they fasted, he told Jonah, he's going to spare them. Jonah was upset. But because the king fasted, Amen. And got everybody to fast. Even the very animals could eat. And when the Lord looked at what they were doing, that fasting helps to humble us. So have humility. Amen. That's what it does. Keep us in subjection. That's what fasting does for us. So, so here we have the, the king of Nineveh. He fasted and everybody fasted and the Lord held back the judgment was going just, just a few words that the message was yet 40 days that many people shall be overthrown, but the Lord spared them. And Jonah was so upset. Amen. But when we fast, you know, amen, we put the enemy, amen, in subjection. And yet the Lord didn't destroy them. So here we have, amen, Judah. We have Jehoshaphat. Judah. Jehoshaphat the king. Judah. Amen. The, the Messianic tribe stood before the Lord with their little ones, wives, and their everybody came because this was a national crisis. Amen. Because the, the company that came against them was came to destroy them, to wipe them out. Amen. So their little ones and their children, amen, they were all in jeopardy and they could see this. But they know if they canceled God, the victory would have been theirs. So now you find that everybody was there. The king, amen, he consulted God and Judah, the tribe, and the people, and all the children, everyone got it. In the time of crisis, everybody had to, had to you know, fasting is a very a powerful weapon. Amen, they fast and seek the God, seek God by prayer. Amen, and they stood amen, before the new court, amen, where the sanctuary was. All of them gathered together and united themselves in what? So, beloved ones, if we if we are united, you know, we, we can do great wonders. But we have to be united of the same mind, mind moving in the same direction and minding the same things. If we are united, then we know that victory is already ours. We are united, we stand, but divided, we will fall. But if we are united in prayer, this is it. 
He says, and all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Everybody came to the prayer. Everybody came, was on fasting. Everybody, little ones, was there as well. There's mention of the children and the little ones. I would say the little ones would not fast, but they were there. Amen. If the little ones were there, maybe the children, babies, everybody was there standing. And he said, and the children was there. Then, because of the, they were united, because they counseled God with one mind, and everybody was together. When that happens, God is going to move. Amen. God will move. Amen. And because they were of that, see what happened. He said, then, upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benina, the son of Jehiel, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the son of Asa, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. <laughs> this is what we say, beloved ones. In the midst of the congregation, because they were united, because they were together, because they seek the Lord, everything was in order. You find that joke, the king, then the then the, 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 Jew, the men of Judah, then you have the people, you now the children, everybody was there, and the order was set. You know, if, if, if the church is because the anointing is in order, you know, if the church is in order and the anointing will come. If there's disorder in the church, that's confusion. God don't work in confusion. God will work when there's order. Amen. Is put right within his church in the body. Then the anointing will come. So because everything was in order, amen, and they consult God and never rely on themselves. Look what happened. In the midst of the congregation, the word the Lord came to the word. To Jehazel, amen, a young Levite, amen, of the sons of Asa, came the spirit of the Lord, amen, in the midst of the congregation, a prophecy came. In the assembly, when we are together, prophecies will come, amen, messages will come, we hear from God, healing will take place, everything will happen if we are together. Because they were so united, the Spirit of the Lord came in the midst of the congregation. One of the things that we, we have to understand, if we are in a congregation and the Lord will visit us, we know something is wrong. We need to have God's presence, the presence, the presence of God, that's what's needed. Amen. We know all the singing and the clapping and the jumping, which is good, but without the presence, it won't mean anything. It won't mean anything. We can get happy, amen, and the music is there, jiving on the music and jumping. But if the presence is not there, it's just another gathering. So look, because of everything was in order, the Bible said, then came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. Now prophecy was on, amen. And he said, this is what the word of God said. How can ye, all Judah, never listen? It's not Judah. And ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Joachim, thou dost say the Lord, amen, thus say the Lord unto you, be not afraid, nor dismayed, by reason of this great multitude, and don't be afraid of them. For the battle is not yours, but God. Now this is it, God take full control now. You know, he said the battle, is not theirs, the battle is God. He said, don't be afraid, nor be dismayed of this great company that comes out against you. Because God already sum it up and have the answer ready. Is that something? So this is the prophecy. The prophecy said, how can ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou King Joseph, thus said the Lord unto you, thus said the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by the reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but the battle belongs to God. Stand still. Told Moses that at the Red Sea, stand still. Amen. And watch the salvation of the Lord. When the Lord says, stand still, you know, that means say, leave it to him. 
He still I know that I am God. So he said, the battle is not yours. The battle belongs to God. So when the prophet, when the prophet Jehazel got a word from God, instructions, God gave instructions, but we know what to do. You know, if we're not hearing from God, then, you know, we just do what we think we should do. But we need to get a word from God. So hear what the instructions was here to Joseph and all Judah. He said, tomorrow, go ye down against them. Tomorrow, the Lord said, his structure now. This is where obedience has been tested. He said, tomorrow, some said, no, not tonight. He said, tomorrow. So you have to obey the word of God. He said, tomorrow, go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Zis, and ye shall find them at the end of the book before the wilderness of Jeruel. Now, the location where they had to find them, they had to obey the instruction. You got to obey the word of God. Because anyhow, we do not obey the word of God, we never ever get the blessing. Because if God said, what he says, he instructs on tomorrow. If you go today, it's not going to happen. If you go two days later, it's not going to happen. But he said, tomorrow, go ye down against them, Behold, they come up by the cliff of this location. You know what he said to Elijah? When Elijah, amen, uh, come up against Ahab and to the king and said, not, shall not rain or do, amen, according to my word. Amen. And the Lord said to him, amen, you leave and go by the book Jericho and you remain there. You know, the ravens came morning and evening and feed him. If he did not follow the, the location and the word of God, if he had gone somewhere different, he'd have died of starvation. But because he obeyed what God had said, and he went by the brook Cherish, and he stayed there evening and morning, the raven brought him food and fed him because he obeyed the instruction. It's important that we obey the word of God. Here they obeyed, and he said, Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Zis, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You have to follow the word of God. Without instruction, we will never get to. We are on a journey to heaven. And what's going to take us here is the word of God. You know, today, people don't follow the word of God. A lot of people do what they think they should be doing. But the word of God is quite clear by the man that needs to get to heaven. But it, the word of God is not compromising. The word of God is instruction from God. Amen. And if God says so, it is so. Amen. The word of God is, a, is the guidelines to our way of life. Amen. Sometimes we over try to bypass it. You can if you do bypass, you're going to run into trouble. So one has got to make sure that the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. This is the word of God. The one has got to learn to obey the word of God and to trust it. Trust the word of God. Have an understanding, knowledge of the word of God. And with that, we'll be able to make our way, press our way to, to heaven. So, the, so this, the scripture said here, tomorrow, Go ye down against them, behold, they come up by the cliff of Zith, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. He said, Ye shall not need to fight. He instructed them, and the Lord saying to them and reminding them, He said, To the prophet, He said, Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. There are many battles that we take on that we don't need to fight. Amen. Many battles that we take and start fighting, we need to leave it to God. You can serve God because God, you know, he, the Lord promises to keep us. He promises to watch over us. Eh? He says, don't worry. I mean, I was reading in, in the book of Matthew, and when he tells you, he said, when he consider the fowls of the air, they do not sow, nor spin, nor, 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 they do not sow, nor reap, nor gather into barn. Yet our Heavenly Father feedeth them. You know, they never go one night without a nice dinner. 
and they don't sow and are reap. Hmm? He says, our life is more than meat and our body is more than bread. We don't read the scripture sometimes. He says, he said that when Solomon, he said when he considered the lilies all they grow, right? The lilies all they grow. He said Solomon in all his glory was never arrayed like one of these. Eh? So he said, if he so clothes the grass which he cut down and burnt and cast into the home, much more us his, his children. Eh? He said, what we have to do is seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all things will be added unto us. Not something, all things. But we have to seek God's uh, word and his righteousness. Seek in the face of God. He said, don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient, sufficient unto this day. It, the day is the evil there. So we have to depend upon God. Don't worry. If you worry too much, you have blood pressure. And you have all kinds of things happening to you. So guy, how can a disease will come upon us? Don't worry. We put our trust in God. Amen. And God will see us through. Amen. We just have to believe God's word and act upon it. Trust him and obey. So he said here, we do not, he said to Joseph, ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself. Stand ye still. Amen. Moses said to the man of the river, stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. Same way came to Joseph at this. Stand still. Amen. Sometimes we have to stand still and let God do what he needs to do. And see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not. Nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them for the Lord will be with you. He said the Lord will be with you. And I need to encourage you to let you know this beloved one. He said, Lo, I am with you. Always, even to the end of the age. He's not forever forgotten you. When we quit, he never quits. Amen. Because God is, a, is, a, is, is the same yesterday, today, and, and forever. Amen. We have got an assurance and confidence in God. He never fails us yet. We failed him so many times. But we know that he never fails. So here he said, uh, be still. Amen. Uh, we must not be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with them. In verse 18, it says, And Joseph, how oh, is it? Now this is it. This is, look at this now. In verse 18, Joseph, how oh, is it? When the Lord, when the word of God came, amen, with his face to the ground. He, made, he humbled himself, and he bowed with his face to the ground. Amen. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. So they begin to worship God. Remember now, they got the word and they know exactly, amen, what the instruction was. And so they took the word, they accepted it, and now they began to worship. Do you notice here he said, Joseph had bowed his head with his face to the ground and all Judah. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord and what they'll do, worshiping the Lord. So you have to try worship, you have to worship God. When you worship God, then you know that, amen, the beauty of holiness. If you worship God, you know, she must worship Him in the beauty of holiness. So now, worshiping, another thing they did was verse 19 said, and the Levites of the children of Kohathites. And of the children of Korites stood up to praise the Lord, God of Israel, with a loud voice and high. So they opened their mouth and they praised God. So they were worshiping and praising God. Worshiping and praising God. When we worship God, God begins to move. All we have to do is worship and praise God. Amen. Praise Him with the two heart. So now it says the Levites and the children of the Korites. And of the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice and high. So they didn't just worship him silent, night, silent, quiet. No, they worship him with a loud voice, open my mouth sometimes, praise God. Sometimes we're praising God with a hush, hush mouth. No, we need to open our mouth and praise the Lord with a loud voice and high. Amen. Because God, God, is our praise. 
And when we worship God and praise him, God begins to work for us. And verse 20, moving down and saying, and they arose early in the morning and went forth and into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Joasaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord, beloved ones. I'm going to leave that word with you tonight. Believe in the Lord. Don't believe nothing else. Don't believe yourself. Just believe in God's word. He said to you, believe in the Lord your God. No matter what's happening, believe in the Lord your God. To put faith, believe is to put faith and trust in the Lord our God. He said here, believe in the Lord your God. So shall he be established. Believe his prophets, so shall he prosper. Believe the word of God. Believe the word that the Lord sent with his servants and preachers to us. Amen. Because our faith will only grow by our hearing. And our hearing will grow by the word of God. And how can the people hear? They need a preacher. And how can the preacher preach? Only if he's sent by God. I have to you know, go the negative way here. Also, there are many preachers today not sent by God. They're preaching from their head knowledge. And they're preaching information, not revelation. So what we need to be preaching is revelation from, from God, what the Holy Ghost puts in us and brings to us in our spirit. We can gather as much information to preach from. Remember, information is not revelation. Information is what man gathers and preach from his own head. Amen. But when you begin to preach from the heart, when God dealing with our heart and our spirit, then he gives us revelation of his word. He knows the time and seasons, what sort of word to bring to us. Read my word. He knows what to bring and no word when he brings a word for the truth. God knows that. We don't want a preacher that collects messages from the internet or are other men books or other men ideas. You need to go to the Bible, which is the word of God. And the Bible is the word of God. When you have the Holy Ghost, amen, you pray, you worship God, you get the revelation on what God wants us to say. And because the worst thing we could ever have is when a man speaking to us about something that he gather from a book or uh, from uh, the net. Uh, because that net is loaded with all kind of fast profit. You have to, have to be careful of that. Eh? Because now, hear what the Bible said here. He said in verse 20, And they rose up early in the morning, and went forth into the wilderness of Echoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. So shall ye be established. Believe his prophets. So shall he prosper. The latter prophets, many spirits have gone out there. And I said that John, the Apostle John, in his day when he was getting old, the church that he pastors in the, in the provinces of, of, of Ephesus, amen, the false teachers and the false prophets, the false doctrine was rampant in the church. Amen. So we have that to leave the true prophets. And when something is prophesied, you have to be a witness with it. Because they'll tell you anything. But you got to have the Holy Ghost, amen, to tell us whether this is a true prophet or not. Now, in verse 21, he said, And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers. Now, Jehoshaphat now in action, he got a word from God. Everything was in place. So now he's going to praise God. Because praise is going to do this thing. So now, Jehoshaphat, Amen. What he did was, he, he, remember I said he had a million, nearly one million soldiers, but he never consulted them to fight. But what he did was he rehearsed the choir. Yeah, ain't that something great? Amen. He rehearsed the choir. And the Bible said, and when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord. Singers unto who? The Lord. Not singers unto me, nor anyone. The singers must be unto the Lord. Because this thing must be a God thing unto the Lord. 
and that should praise the beauty of holiness. Singer, he, he, he rehearsed the choir. Amen. That they should sing praise unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness. As they went out before the army, notice he put the choir in front of the army. Not the army in front, the choir praise. Because remember, we're dealing with Judah. Amen. And if it's Judah, Judah means praise. So we're dealing with the southern kingdom. And what he did was get the choir and rehearse the choir. And what he did was, he said, and they went out before the army. And they put the choir before the army. And to say, praise the Lord. Amen. For his mercy, enjoy it forever. So you notice when he began to praise God, you know that's what God wants to hear when you praise him. People are God in habits, our praises. When you praise him, then you know victory is there, already won. So you notice he said, and when they began to sing to praise, the Lord knows, ambush, send ambushment against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Seir, which were come against Judah. And they were smitten. The enemy was destroyed. This is what praise does. Yeah. This is what praise does. This is what worship does. When it's trust God and obey his word, enemies start to destroy the one another. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir. So now the Lord uh, put ambushment. They ambush each other. Ambushment. The Lord sent ambushment against them. Right? So what they start to do? They start to fight the one another. They start to kill one another. It's like a supernatural army come against them and begin to slay each other. So the Bible said, for the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir. Huh. So these two brothers stood up against Esau. You see what happened here? I remember I said Esau is Seir, Mount Seir. Seir is Esau. And utterly to slay and destroy them. These great armies start to fight against one another. Confusion. They looked at one another and saw the enemy and begin to kill one another. Okay? They utterly, and so the Bible said, and the Palestinian of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, Everyone helped to destroy themselves. So after Ammon and Moab destroyed Seir, Mount Seir, all the soldiers of Seir that gathered, then Ammon and Moab turned on the one another. And they began to kill themselves. Bodies everywhere. So this is this is where the spirit of God, this is what praise does. Praise confuse the enemy. Praise and worship will confuse the enemy, and they began to destroy one another. God sent ambushment amongst them. They thought, well, they were fighting another army, but they were their own men that they began to kill. When you trust God and praise God, God will destroy every army from every uh, enemy from around. And see what happened? They began to destroy another. And when Judah came towards the watchtower, God, the Lord had said to them, they must go and watch. Or get to a place and watch where the people have sit. And they should look to see what's taking place. So God wanted to show them his power. So he said, and when Judah came towards the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked. He said, they looked. Amen. They looked. They looked unto the multitude. And behold, there were dead bodies falling to the earth, and not one of them escaped. They, they fought each other, begin to kill one another. Confusion was set in. Moab fighting against Ammon after they slew Seir, Esau. I mean, these were the, the people that they refused Moses from coming up out of Egypt to get to the promised land. Now they Judgment, retribution, and touch them. And they were not satisfied when the Lord told Moses not to fight them. Now they came and to Judah when they were settled on the land. Eh? These same three came together, eh? came to fight against Jehoshaphat. 
and the southern kingdom. And this is what happened to them. God sent ambushment amongst them and they killed each other and dead bodies were everywhere because the battle was not belonging to Joseph and Judah. The battle belongs to God. So miss people, uh, the spirit of whatever it is that came against them, ambushment and they kill each other. Confusion had set it. And his bodies have fallen to the earth and none of them escaped. And when Joseph and his people came to take away the spoil, because now they were all dead. So now war had, was finished and now all the spoil had to be gathered. And when Joseph and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance, the blessing, you know, both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves, more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering of the spoil. It was so much. So now the enemy was destroyed, but that was not it. All the spoil that they gathered, it took them three days to carry away all the jewels, the gold, and everything that they could, they, they, they had, the spoil that they had from all of these bodies of Moabites, the Ammonites, and Mount Seir, and, the, and Seir Esau. Now, you find that they carried away more in abundance than they could, when it took them three days to carry. Amen. What they had gleaned. Uh, the spoils that they took from them. And on the fourth day, they assembled themselves in the valley of Iraqa. But there they blessed the Lord. Therefore, the name of the, of the same place was called the valley of Iraqa. Unto this day, it's a place of blessing. But the blessing that they received after the war was more than they could carry. Amen. Took them three days to carry it away. And this was not an, an ordinary war. Amen. They gathered against them. That when Joseph had heard of the multitude that came out against him, he feared and he trembled at his knees. Amen. And like I said, he had a million army, but he did not go towards his army. He went to see God about it. Great example here that we should learn. Amen. When troubles come upon us, go to God with it first. God, will, God wants us to come. And some of the battles that we try to fight, amen, is not belonging to us. Amen. Go to God with it, and God will tell us the direction and give us instruction what we have to do. God will give us a word, amen, in the multitude of the gathering, amen, of Joseph and Judah, amen, the wives and children and everything. A word of God came to a prophet, one of the young prophets called Jehazel. Amen. And the Lord said, be stand still. Don't be dismayed, not be afraid. But the battle is not there. The battle belongs to God. Beloved one, strong text here to show us, amen. But you notice that he started off with fasting. Started to fast, amen. Consecrate himself, himself. He stood before God, confession. Everything was done. Amen. They went through every process. Amen. And the, the king started first, and drew the next, and he gathered the people of the cities, and they were united. Amen. They stood before the court. Amen. And they were, because this was a national crisis time, in a war. Amen. We are living in a time, amen. Right now we have, amen, a pandemic. Amen. Virus is global. Amen. We, we don't even understand. I mean, the vaccine is being provided. Amen. But I turn to God first. Amen. Amen. I don't turn to God because the blood of Jesus Christ. If we don't know that the blood of Jesus Christ, amen, is what we have to look to. Amen. Because the blood, there's no disease that the blood of Jesus Christ cannot, uh, cannot control. Amen. I have to go to Christ first with it. And then the word from the Lord, what I need to do. Amen. God will instruct us what we need to do. Amen. Amen. Uh, the Lord is sent, send them to bring the virus. We will soon know. Amen. And, but we have to trust God first. 
We have to put our trust in God. We cannot ever leave God out of the equation. If we do that, I believe that we'll be making a mistake if we do that. We have to trust God. Amen. The vaccines are everywhere, but we are here having, amen, this coronavirus virus with us. Amen. So we need to see God. We need to come together and pray. Amen. And ask God and to, to see us through this. Amen. And not we don't ask him to take it away and not stop it because only him who alone knows why this virus is here. Amen. So he can he will see us through it. Amen. And he will what will happen? We know it will happen. But God is the only one that we can trust. Amen. So one we trust God, we seek direction from God. And what's the body Lord said, so we must do that we, that we should do. Amen. And I believe that the blood of Jesus Christ is the strongest thing we have on this planet to help us. Amen. I believe that. Amen. So when it's time for us to, amen, to do what we have to do, the Lord will instruct us. Amen. So let us keep our eye upon Jesus and ask Jesus to see us through. So he said on the fourth day, they assembled themselves in the valley of Barak. But there they, they bless the Lord. Therefore, the name of the place was called the Valley of Baraka until this day. Then they returned, every man of Judah and Jerusalem. They returned, every man of Judah and Jerusalem, and Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them. No, Jehoshaphat walking in the front of them. Victorious king. Amen. But the king of kings was ahead of him, who already sought him out. So they said, then they returned everyone, verse 27, of Judah and Jerusalem. And Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them, walking in front of them, the king, to go again to Jerusalem with joy. So after victory come joy. Amen. For the Lord God had made them to rejoice over their enemies. God will make us rejoice over our enemies. That's the God we serve. He never fails you. Never. All we have got to do is obey his instruction. Do what he said we need to do. Amen. And then he will bring joy to us. The Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies. No matter what the problem is. No matter what pestilence they are. God will make us rejoice over every problem that comes up against us. We just need to trust God, and God will do it. And verse 28, and they came to Jerusalem with salt streets, amen, with tambourines and harps and trumpets unto the house of the Lord. So they came back to Jerusalem triumphant, rejoicing with spoils and blessing and everything because Joseph had trust in God and never relied on his own efforts. Amen. Of his own, amen. Uh, soldiers that he had, but he relied on God. He prayed and he fasted and gathered everybody together, and he had a unity amongst them. Amen. And the Lord blessed them. Prophecies came. Spirit of the Lord came amongst them. Amen. And got a word from God. Instruction was given. Amen. And whatsoever God told them, that's what they did. And because of that, they were victorious. Amen. And now they went back to Jerusalem. The enemy was destroyed and they could get back to the house of God. And the Bible said, Amen. And they came to Jerusalem with sword strings and harps and trumpets unto the house of the Lord. They go back to the sanctuary. Amen. And to give God thanks. For what he has done for them. Because if it was not for God, the enemy would have wiped them out. Because of what God did, they, went, they were very thankful. And then you notice they didn't go home when they came back to Jerusalem. They all went to the house of God to say thank you. But it's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Eh? And to show forth his loving kindness towards us. So they went to the house of the Lord. And that reason is to praise God, meet with God, and to say thank you. 
Amen. For if God has done something for us, we need to say thank you. Amen. Remember there were 10 lepers, men and when they came to Jesus and Jesus, amen, said, go and show yourself to the priest. They went to show themselves to the priest. Amen. But on their way, they found that the leprosy had left their bodies, gone from them. And you know, only one came back to say thank you. When he realized that the leprosy had gone, so when he came back to Jesus to say, Jesus, thank you, Jesus said, we're not there are ten cleansed, but where is the nine? Jesus want the entire the entire man, the entire man for one part. You know, but there was someone that was grateful. Jesus said, where are the nine? Wasn't, wasn't there not ten cleansed? And the man says, he does know. But what Jesus did, Jesus sent the man and blessed him and made the man whole. The rest of them was, was healed of leprosy. But this man was also healed of the leprosy and was made whole. So you see the blessing of saying, thank you, Lord, for what he has done for us. Amen. So you and I, beloved ones, enemy, amen. I don't swear he wanted us. We were trapped in bondage and in sin. The devil got us. But Jesus came, amen, from heaven down here to us on earth to deliver us, amen, from the bondage of sin because Satan had us where he wanted us, amen. We were, we were captives of and bondage, Satan, amen. Adam sold us out under sin, amen. And we lost our inheritance, we lost our way from God, amen, heading in the wrong direction, amen. But Jesus Christ came in the fullness of time came and Jesus Christ came as our prophet, priest and king. And what he did was he came and he put an end. He became our kinman redeemer. I believe every time I, I do any teaching, I, I have to re remind us of Jesus Christ as our kinman redeemer who came to deliver us. Amen. And here we are, beloved ones, this evening. Amen. And this whole teaching with this text. Amen. Of Second Chronicles 20. To see what praise, amen, and worship, worshiping God and praising Him can do. And you notice that we have been delivered from sin and shame and degradation. God, Jesus Christ came, amen, and destroyed the plan of the enemy. He came and put, amen, the devil, amen, where he needs to be, amen, and salvation has been brought down. We have been delivered, we have been saved, sanctified. Justified, reconciled. Amen. This is what Jesus has done for us. So we got all right to praise him. Amen. When no one else could help, but Jesus came and rescued us. Amen. Amen. From the hands of the enemy. And grant us deliverance and peace. Here we are. Amen. Amen. Strengthening one another with the word of God. Amen. Remember uh, tonight, this evening, where you are. Amen. That Whatever we do, put our trust in God. Amen. Put no confidence in man. God, God must be first. God will use men to do things, but he must give the direction. Amen. Seek him first to hear what he has to say. Then we move towards what we need to be doing. God have the answer. Amen. If you want the answer, go to Jesus. Amen. He's nigh us all the time. As a matter of fact, he lived within us. Amen. He don't, he can't get no closer than Jesus to us. That's where he dwells. Amen. And he's the one that has chosen us and blessed us with our spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Amen. In Christ Jesus. It belongs to him. We are the sons of God. Amen. And he has made us the temple of the living God. And he's the one who dwells in us. Amen. So we, amen, have him 24-7. He said, Lo, I am with you always even until the end of the age. So let us continue to, amen, put our trust in Jesus Christ. Amen. As Jehoshaphat did, the order of doing things, and God came in, and God took over, and God blessed them. It took them all this time, amen, to get the spoils 
and they went back to Jerusalem to the house of God to praise God and to say thank you. Then God do anything for us, get back to say to the house of God to say thank you. Amen. Verse 29. And the fear of God. Look what happened here now in the 29th verse. And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they saw what God had done to Ammon and Moab and Seir. The fear of God fell upon all the kingdoms of those countries when they had heard that the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel. When they heard that God fought against the enemies of Israel. Then, you know, when they heard fear fell upon them. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet. Why is God gave him rest round about from the enemies? Is that something? Hmm? And Jehoshaphat reigned over Judah. He was 30 and 5 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 20 and 5 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Azuba, the daughter of Eli. Now, he reigned 25 years in Jerusalem, and the Lord blessed him. And he walked in the ways of Asa, his father. And we walked not in the ways of his father, and departed not from, from it, doing that which was right in the sight of the Lord. And he walked in the ways of Asa, his father, and departed not from it doing that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Albeit the high places were not taken away, for as yet the people had not prepared their hearts after the God. So here we see him in Jehoshaphat, and the rest of Jehoshaphat, we can read about him. Amen. Written in the book of Jehu. And you don't need to read the book of Jehu, because everything that you need is in the book. If you can read the book of Jehu, if you can, if you know much about Jehu, you mentioned, he's mentioned in the Bible, one of the men that was anointed by Elijah, uh, he came out of the wilderness, he anointed Jehu, and he anointed Elisha, the son of Shabbat, and he also anointed, amen, Israel, the king of Syria. So you can find out something about Jehu. Even they talk about him. But we thank God to me. Amen. And today, this afternoon, for some, wherever you are, what country you are in at this time, amen. And we are living all over. It is tonight. And God bless you all in the name of Jesus. Amen. And uh, uh, we wish you also a very prosperous new year. And that the Lord will bless and keep you. Amen. And as we go through, amen, we have to just way through because it's pressing time. Amen. Amen. Because the Lord is on his way coming. And we give it. We ask a matter of fact, we are nearer now than when we first believe. Amen. The signs of the times are everywhere. Serious time. Amen. There's a there's something in the air. There's a feeling that I'm having. Amen. And I don't know about your beloved ones. But we have to look up for our redemption right now. Jesus rapture is about to take place. Believe it. And I can only encourage you, men, that we need to be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the truth, serving God and worshiping him. God bless you. Let us be steadfast. Let us be what God wants us to be at this time. Keep ourselves unspotted in the world. Look up for Jesus is on his way coming. All want to meet the rapture. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Let me just say a word of prayer for all of us. Those are in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, the King of kings and Lord of lords, eternal God, mighty to save, strong deliverer. Lord, we thank you for your goodness, grace, and mercy. We thank you for this Zoom teaching tonight. We thank you for the word of God. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you have sent the word to strengthen us. Mighty God, so that we can put our trust and faith and confidence in you. Help us, Lord, not to look to the right, not to the left, but to remain focused, depending upon you, for you are our total existence and our source of survival. Lord Jesus, you are our divine healer, our supernatural miracle working God, our strength in time of weariness, our light where shadows fall. You are our shade in the blazing sun, 
By God Almighty, you are the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. Bright and morning star. God, we pray and thank you, Lord Jesus, for the blessing that you have blessed us with. Help us, God Almighty, to keep our minds and our state upon you, knowing that the rapture is about to come. God, any second, any minute, any day, no, you shall come. No man knows the day nor the hour. But you said, Lord, the times, the signs of the times are everywhere. So when we see the sign, we shall look for our redemption. And bless each and every one on the Zoom right now. Bless the saints, whoever they are. In the name of Jesus, you know each and every one of us, Lord. Lord, it is you, Lord, that has sealed us with the Holy Spirit of promise. Lord Jesus, until the redemption of our purchased position. Bless us, we do pray as we ask right now. Take full control. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And now may the abiding grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and our Father, faithful fellowship, communion of the Holy Ghost to come with you. Let's remain in the mind of us all and in Jesus come again. Amen and amen. God bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ, just wave your hand and say, God bless you to one another. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So good to see you. Amen. Amen. Jephthah, which is Jamaica here, with Akeem, Mr. Ben, Beth Powell, Mr. Lewin, we see Joe Brown, Mr. Faith Darby, we see Jackie Wilson, we see Immense, we see Javillian, Mr. Mel, always up at Rupert, and then we see Mr. Bennett, and we see oh, so many, Deacon, Deacon Walker from Sheffield.